Good day. This video will discuss the passing in 2022, question 19. Before that, since I haven't really discussed about chapter 7 statics, so we'll go through a few points in this chapter before we do the questions. So if you don't need the revision, you can just use the timestamp below to skip this part of the video. First topic is about the center of gravity, where it is defined as a point where the whole weight of the system is assumed to act. So this is valid when the system is in a uniform gravitational field or when the object is small. So this is something quite similar as what we learned about the gravitational field strength that when we talk about the cast that is near to the surface of the Earth. We can say that most of the object that we are dealing is quite small when we compare to the size of the Earth itself. So there's a formula to calculate the center of gravity, which is the total of the mass times the x divided by the total mass. So I'm sure you should have learned about it in chapter 3 before. And most of the cases in this chapter that assume the center of the weight is at the center of the object, unless the question stated another condition. So the next thing is about the equilibrium of a particle, which is something very small. The condition for the particle to be in equilibrium is that there is no resultant force acted on the particle. So compared to the next topic, which talk about the rigid body, there is something extra about it. For the rigid body to be in equilibrium, there must be no resultant force or there must be no resultant torque acted on the rigid body. We have learned that resultant force will cause the object to accelerate in the direction of the force, while the torque, which is also known as the rotational force, or also known as the moment of the force, will cause the object to rotate at a certain axis. Torque is given as the product of force multiplied the distance from the axis of the rotation. So now let's proceed to the passive question. So here is the questions. So question A and B has already explained in the previous part of the video. So just proceed to question C. We are given with a ladder of length 15 meter, mass 15 kg, rest again on a smooth wall. So smooth is something very important information for us that it indicates there's no friction between the ladder and the wall. So the top end is 12 meter from the wall as shown in the diagram below. So the center of gravity of the ladder is located at one third of the length from the bottom end. So we know that the length of the ladder is 15 meter. So one third means that it is five meter okay, from the bottom end. So the, this should be the center of gravity, okay, five meter of the length of the ladder. So a boy of mass 50 kg climbs up the ladder until center of gravity of the boy is half of the length of the ladder. So the boy is at half of the length where we have 15 divided by 2, it should be 7.5 meters. So this is where the boy located. So it is about 7.5. So the first question is to sketch all the forces which act on the ladder. So this first step is very important that we should identify all the possible forces acted on the ladder. The first type is of course about the weight of the ladder itself, 55 kg and also the boy. The second type of force that we can detect is the reaction force between the ladder and the wall and also the between the ladder and the floor. So you should remember that reaction force uh, should be always uh, normal, it's like between the wall and the ladder, so it will be a horizontal force to the left. While between the ladder and the floor, it is an outward force, okay? so this would be the two reaction force that should be expected in this question. And then the next thing that we can expect is about the friction force. So you can imagine the movement of the ladder if it is start to slide down. So for the bottom end of the ladder, it will move to the left. So the friction force should be to the right to prevent it to slide to the left. While on the top end of the ladder, so when the ladder is going to slide down, so there should be a friction acted upward. However, the question mentioned about a smooth wall, which means that there's no friction here. Okay, so but uh, for a normal pressure that there could be some friction, but in this case, it is equal to zero and okay, the friction of the wall. So to summarize all of this, there are three types of forces involved in this test. First is the gravitational force, or also known as the weight. Second is the normal reaction force, which should be perpendicular to the surface all the time. The third is the friction force that should be opposed to the motion of the object. So apologize to my very beautiful drawing. So let's see the suggested answer for the first question. So this is the suggested answer for the first question where you can see all the forces involved. First is the gravitational force, which is by the ladder itself and also the buoy. 
The G here is representing the gravitational acceleration, which is the 9.81 meter per second squared. Second thing is about the reaction force, which I label as R, R for reaction, W for the wall, F for the floor. So you can have your own symbol yourself. So reaction should be always 90 degrees to the surface. And the third thing is about the friction force that is always opposed to the motion of the object. So we have the friction here, which is to the right. And in normal cases, that we also have another friction here, which is in outward direction. But for this case, it mentioned that the world is very smooth, which means frictionless. So you can just take away these forces away. So another information that we need is about the angle. We are given with the length of the ladder is 15 meter and the height from the top end to the floor is 12 meter. So just apply the function of trigonometry, which will be the cos theta in this case. So you should be able to get the 36.7 degree easily by yourself. So after we have understand about the free body diagram in this case, we can proceed to the second question, which is to determine the process exerted by the wall and the floor on the ladder. So to solve any question that relates with statics, you should always remember two things that you can apply. For the object to be in equilibrium stats, it should have zero resultant force and also zero torque applied on the object. So the first thing that we can do is to find out the resultant torque. To do this, we need to choose a point to be our pivot or the moment wisely. So here we would always suggest to pick the point where there's a lot of forces acted, which is the bottom end of the ladder. So we can see there are two forces here. So making the pivot point here would remove these two forces at the initial of the calculation. So the first thing that we have is the mass of the ladder, 55 kg multiplied 9.81. And don't forget that we should always choose the force that is perpendicular to the ladder. So here we can just apply the sine 36.87 degree. So you should know why we choose sine here. So if we sine 36.87 and also multiply the distance 5 meter. Okay, so we have the first torque applied on the ladder and this is in clockwise direction. So another torque is by the boy itself, which is the same as the ladder. So we have almost the same equation that we have 50, 50 kg, okay, plus 50 kg, multiply 9.81, multiply 7.5, and also multiply sine 36.87. So both these torque give clockwise torque. And the next thing is about the reaction force of the wall. So you can see it actually pushed the ladder up, which is in the anti-clockwise direction. So since the ladder is not moving, so there should be equilibrium that the clockwise torque should be equal to the anti-clockwise torque. So here what we have is the reaction between the wall and the ladder multiply cos 36.7 degree and then multiply the distance 15 meter. So that's it for the first question that we can solve it to obtain the value of the reaction force between the wall and the ladder. So just key in the value into the calculator and you should get the answer easily. So what do we have is 55 multiply 9.81 by 5 multiply sine 36.87 and then plus 50 times 9.81 multiply 7.5 multiply sine 36.87. And then what we have is to divide 15, divide by 15, divide by cos 36.87. And you should get the final answer as 318.83 Newton as the reaction force of the wall. So the answer is 318.83 Newton. So this will be the only force that exit by the wall on the ladder. So now we're going to determine the force exerted by the floor on the ladder. So since we already covered about the top, so maybe we can think of another strategy to find out the friction force and also the reaction force. Of course, we can still apply the top, but maybe we can try to use the forces in equilibrium instead. So we can split this into two types of components. One is the horizontal components and another is the vertical components. So first thing is the original components, which I think is very quite straightforward. You could see that friction force is balanced by the reaction force of the wall. So the first thing that we can directly obtain the value is the friction force that should be equal to the reaction force since there is no other 
horizontal force acted on the ladder. So this is a very straightforward that we can quickly obtain the friction force of the floor is equal to the reaction of the wall that is equal to 318.83 Newton. So these two forces have the same magnitude, but in the same direction. So this is uh, where we could have the forces is in equilibrium in the horizontal components. While for the vertical components, you can see that the direction of the flow is balanced by the weight of the ladder, 55 kg, and also the weight of the boy, 50 kg. So what we could do is that we just perform the sum that we have the reaction force of the flow is equal to the weight of the ladder, uh, the mass of the ladder, 55 kg plus 50 kg, multiply 3 k 9.81 meter per second square, and this should be the magnitude of the reaction force of the flow. So what we have is uh, 55 plus 50 is 105, multiply 9.81, and that should be the reaction force, 1030.05 Newton. So these are the two forces that acted by the flow on the ladder. So the next thing that you could do is to obtain the total force, which you could do the Pythagoras theorem. Okay, you should do the vector sum for the both these two vectors. So the total force, so you could label it yourself that the total force here, okay, so it should be equal to the Pythagoras theorem, square root of the 318 for at 3 Newton, square plus 130.05 square. Okay, so this should be the total force we have the square root of. Okay, so this should be the total force acted. So you could just add it extra in case the question asks for it. Okay, so this should be the total resultant force acted by the flow. Okay, so I'm not sure if we need to get it, but these are the forces that it's possible to get the friction, reaction force, and this would be the resultant force between the friction and the resultant by the flow. So now we can move to the last part of the question. If the coefficient of the static friction between the ladder and the floor is 0 0.45, what is the length of the ladder that could be climbed by the boy before the ladder slips? So this is actually the reverse of what we have done in the previous question. We are given with the coefficient 0 0.45. So with the formula of mu r, we can obtain the maximum static friction force before the ladder slips. So we have the we have already the value of the reaction force which is equal to 1030.05 newton. Okay, this is, should be the constant in this case because it depends on the mass of the boy and the ladder itself. So what we have here is 1030.05. Okay, so the reaction is 1030.05 newton. Okay, so with this, we can obtain the maximum static friction force, which should be equal to the reaction force of the floor of the wall. So what could we do next is just apply the very first step in the early discussion in this question. So first of all, okay, the strategy first is to obtain the maximum static friction force. So what we can do is we have the reaction force, again, the friction force, and equal to 0 0.45 multiply the reaction force of the flow, 1030.05. Okay, so this should be the reaction uh, friction force. So 0 0.45 multiply 1030.05. So what we have is 463.5. So you can see that the friction force just now actually didn't exceed this value. It means that the flow is in uh, equilibrium. And the friction just now didn't exit, so the ladder is in equilibrium. So now this is the maximum. So let us see what is the maximum height of the boy can climb. So with the equation that the friction force is equal to the reaction force of the wall, now we can revise back the equation of the torque that we did in these steps. So let me copy this one and let us review it one by one. Okay, so the first thing that uh, we have the reaction force of the wall, okay, is equal to the friction force. Okay, based on the force is in equilibrium. And now it is in the maximum value of 463.5 Newton. So this one still says 15, 15 meter multiplied cos 36.7. So the weight of the ladder is still the same. Okay, so but for the boy, now we got, it, it is, he is going to climb a new height. So the distance here is becoming the new unknown in this equation. So let us level as x. 
So everything is still the same. Just do the max and you should get the maximum height. Okay, because it will be the maximum reaction force can be applied, else the ladder will not be in equilibrium. So the rest is easy. Just apply this formula and you could get the answer. So what we have is 163.5 times 15 and cos to 6, 7. Okay, minus 55 times 9. Okay, and then divide by 50, divide by 9.81, divide by sine 36.87. So the new height is 13.4 meter. Okay, so beyond than that, the ladder will slip and it will be a good experience for the boy. So that's all for the discussion of this question. Remember two things about statics. If the rigid body is in equilibrium, it should have zero resulting force and zero resultant torque. So that's all for today and thank you for watching.